Well, today I want to welcome to uh, the Photobug podcast a person that uh, I have been fortunate to attend many lectures, workshops, and uh, read many of his books. Uh, he's a photographer, guitar player, and phototherapist. Welcome to the Photobug, Rick Salmon. Well, thank you so much, Jim, for having me. Uh, you know, <clears throat> it's just uh, it's just a crazy time. So I think the stuff like you're doing, the podcast, is just so important. So keep them coming, okay? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> We've been Good. doing it for 10 years, and hopefully if uh, everything permits, we will continue for another 10. I don't know if Fred is. Wow. <laughs> I don't, I'm the wow, youngster I'm here. The, I'm going to outlast that's right, everybody. Right. Yeah, he's younger than me. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm the kid. You know what? I'll be I'll be 80 in 10 years, so I hope you have me back. Oh, there you go. absolutely. We would do that. My 80th birthday. Okay. There you are. Well, I'm, I'm going on 71, so we're... <laughs> cool. Well, we, uh, since you kind of brought it up there, we wanted to talk about um, the challenges right now during a pandemic. And I want to thank you so much for uh, posting. You have a Facebook page, and I urge those who haven't checked it out, uh, it's Phototherapy. It's on Facebook. There's some great people out there. I know Mike Motes, uh, and Mike you post a lot. So, given the challenges of now, and I know it's difficult. To, people have um, canceled workshops, and we've canceled a trip to Japan. So, uh, we want to talk to you a little bit about that. Yeah, well, you know what, Jim? <clears throat> there, there's an expression. The, the expression is, you don't drown by falling in water. You only drowned if you stay there. So it sounds kind of funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> it, it sounds, kind of, but it is true. You don't drown by falling water. You know, you drown by staying there. So yes, during the pandemic, you know, we're all like falling in the water. But it's us to, it's up to us to, you know, drag ourselves out of that water and be productive and keep learning. You know, another expression the Buddhists have is learning is health. So the stuff that you guys are doing, you know, the podcast, the online seminars, the training, the phototherapy Facebook group is amazing. You know, people are. Well, I started it in March, so it's come. It's going to come up in March uh, as a year, and I started it based on my book, you know, Phototherapy, Motivation, and Wisdom, which is actually a photography book with no photos in it, and happens to be my <laughs> best-selling book because I think people, again, the timing was right. People want, you know, a motivation, and they want inspiration. But this phototherapy Facebook group, people are are going there every day and they're posting their pictures and they're 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 commenting on the other pictures and this is one of the ways we learn you know by having people comment on our pictures and what's great about that page people say hey do you have any suggestions so people are giving suggestions as far as processing and cropping and all this stuff so uh, you know that's one one way to do it but you know I think reading and growing and watching online classes and producing is important uh, I think you know me well enough. Uh, you know, another one. <laughs> this is the last one I'll give. Sure. <laughs> last, exp last expression is you snooze, you lose. <laughs> you know, you know. since the pandemic came out, I released a follow-up to a phototherapy, a photo quest, which mm -hmm. also has uh, no pictures in it, which is selling very, very well. Um, I started the Facebook group, and I produced uh, five Kelby One classes. Yes. And we're so looking I'm forward... Not I was going to say, uh, we have uh, Scott Kelby scheduled uh, in the near future to come on the podcast. So, okay. Yeah, Scott is, Scott is amazing. He's such a nice guy. We did a workshop mm -hmm. in China uh, two years ago. Now it's two mm -hmm. years ago. Uh, and he's such an amazing teacher and such a fun guy. And he, he, So, yeah, I think your listeners, I know your listeners and your viewers will love that. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Scott is amazing. But, you know, that Kelby One <clears throat> community, you know, in addition to all the classes, when you become a member... You could sign. You're automatically enrolled in the community, and the same thing there, like with the Facebook therapy, phototherapy Facebook group page. People are, can comment and post pictures mm -hmm. and stuff. So, I think we, you know, we're we're, we're you know, kind of trapped. So, being part of a community, you know, whatever it is, you know, even a local camera club is important. Uh, I gave a Zoom meeting to a group in Turkey uh, two weeks ago, which was a ton of fun. <laughs> so, I think people they. They want and they need. They need to stay connected. You don't want to be isolated because being isolated can lead to some, uh, you know, not so great feelings. Although some people like to be hermits. Yeah. <laughs> well, not us. <laughs> no, not you guys. <laughs> no. 
And I see the guitars behind you. You also have uh, some guitar therapy. And Fred and I, uh, well, I took up the guitar again after I retired. Fred's a drummer. Fred's and a drummer? Fred's oh, yeah. A, Fred's a drummer, yeah. Oh, Fred, what kind of music do you like? Wide variety. A lot of rock. Uh, what people would call rock? Cl classic rock nowadays, probably. I have a couple oh, yeah. of friends. Well, I have a couple of friends that we all made sure that everybody was distant at first, and then we're all have been tested, whatever. And uh, we get together and play for four hours once a week. Oh man, I wish I was closer. <laughs> so Did you play any Santana? Haven't done any Santana. There's only three of us right now. I mean, I do, uh, uh, oyo, oyo, como va? Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Playing a fair amount of Beatles. Um, uh, some Tom Petty, of course. You got to do that if you live in Florida. It's required. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, so you know, it's one of those deals where we just get together and decide, hey, let's try this song. Let's try that song. I, a keyboard and a guitarist and myself. And the keyboard's doubling so in on the bass. you need a bass. These are we need, bass We guitars. do need a bass. Actually, the uh, bass I'm player... Specialize, I specialize in bass now. Do you? I'll tell you, one of these days, when the pandemic is over, you're down here, we're going to have to all get together, yeah. Scott. We'll and, do a jam. And have a jam. <laughs> there you go. I would love that. Well, yeah. you know what? <clears throat> As a... Uh, as you guys may know, the two most important instruments in a band are the drums and the bass. And the bass. Yeah. Oh, yeah. If you don't have good you know, bass. Give the beat. Yeah. And, uh, Paul what, McCartney. Go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. I was just going to say, our, our keyboard player in that little group has taken over the bass duties. He has a second keyboard, and he plays all the bass runs on that. Uh, because mm -hmm. our guitarist is actually a bass player, but he's we needed a guitarist. Ah, just to have a okay. trio to, to be able to pull the melody together. And uh, so it's we're just kind of we keep uh, wishing that a magical fourth person will drop out of the sky, <laughs> and that will, I, you know. I'll tell you how serious I am about the bass before we get back into photography, if I yep. may. Sure. I just I just got a a, a breed love acoustic electric fretless bass. Ooh, so wow. you wanna, Ooh, you know, if fretless you bass. Challenge. Try playing a fretless bass. And say. unlike a stand up bass, a stand up bass it's a, because the neck is so long. You don't exactly have to don't have to ha exactly have your finger in the exact position, mm -hmm. but on a shorter neck, it becomes more critical. Oh. So I am having so much fun playing bass. But getting back to photography and music, mm -hmm. you know. Okay, I said I was only going to give. <laughs> Please, give any more words more. of wisdom are welcome. <laughs> it's never too late to be who you could have been. Yes. Yeah. Again, it sounds funny, but I've. I've gotten pretty good at bass, and I've been playing for, you know, focusing on this for almost a year. So I encourage your listeners and viewers, you know, pick up an instrument, pick up, get a new lens, or go out and say, I'm going to get really good at black and white photography. I'm going to become a great black and white photographer. I'm going to become a great landscape or bird photographer. You know, set, setting goals in life is so important. It's just so important. And now I think is a good time to set a goal, mm -hmm. to set a goal and, and do everything possible to reach that goal. I'm going to add to that too, if I may. Good. Go out to photo therapy and get motivated. There you go. Check out the other people's pictures and then go out and uh, do some of your own. And post yeah, emulate. Them. Yeah. Try to emulate, emulate the exactly. Pictures. Yes. You know. You know. I see so many. Some one of our members was down in uh, Merritt Island. You know where that is. Oh right? sure. Oh, yeah. That. Mm -hmm. And I think at this time of year, it's great for birds. And does it get better in April? Or Yeah, it's March and April, then the birds start coming in. That's, Absolutely. that's really the hot time because we're getting migratory. We're getting mating plumage. Mm -hmm. So No, this person, uh, I think it's Pamela DeCamp. I, I could check. Uh, but she's getting amazing. A lot of members are getting amazing pictures just driving around mm -hmm. that loop in Merritt Island. And, you know, you don't have to go, you know. You might want to go to Alaska to photograph uh, bald eagles, or you might want to go to Bosque del Apache, where I think all the workshops in New Mexico, where you know they have thousands of birds in November, December, and January. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't go there, but go to a, a, a local place like uh, like Merritt Island, or go to like uh, we have a, uh, a wild, two wildlife places pretty close to here. One called the Falconry Excursions, where they take care of owls and. Um, and uh, birds of prey. Mm -hmm. and there's a T Town Lake Reservation, which is not too far from here. It has a lot of owls, and you can go there and have fun photographing birds. Yeah, yeah. I think you have to, you know, you have to keep in practice, just like Fred knows with the drums, right? If you don't play for a while, you know, right? Yeah, you might, your chops you know, start getting a little, little soft. That's right. So we, 
we got to keep those chops, those photo chops up, so to there speak. There you go. Well, even in your own backyard, just put up a bird feeder. I'm amazed at what we get right here just in our backyard. Well, <clears throat> I, I have a class coming out on February 3rd on Kelby One. It's called Backyard Bird Photography. There you Beyond. go. <laughs> and, man, did I learn a lot about photographing birds, including you really have to be patient. Oh, yeah. Oh, well, anything with nature, even landscapes, requires patience. <laughs> Yes, yes, and luck, right? Oh, you, you luck. Want a oh good sure, guy, yeah. You know, Opportunity, you know? sure. Yeah. Can I share a funny bird story with you? Sure, That'll please. It's a bird photography story. <clears throat> right. So I have all these bird feeders. Who want, I don't want a picture of a bird on a metal or wooden bird feeder. Right, exactly. So so I got the uh, I got the feeders, and I duct tape twigs all around them. Mm -hmm. And I chopped down, you know, not chopped down, I cut off some branches from the evergreens because I didn't want them to wilt. You know, the other trees and bushes would have wilted in a day. Right. So I put these up there. Then I'm, I'm on my daily walk. I go for actually two daily walks. Uh, <laughs> I go two walks a day. But anyway, I see this log, and it was like hollowed out. It looked like a woodpecker. It was just on the side of the road. It looked like a, a woodpecker had hollowed it out, but it was actually just an old log. So mm -hmm. I brought it home. I sort it off the, each end, and I put it on a tripod. I put some bird seed in there. Within five minutes, I don't know how the birds found it, I have a woodpecker. I have a picture on my screen. I, I have a woodpecker who uh, you know, jumped in and got some seed, and I got a picture of him like darting out. I mean, th this, <laughs> this made it fun. So, yeah, we can't, maybe we can't go to all these places, but your backyard. I have a, a friend, two friends, uh, uh, Andy Young. Uh, Andy Young. And uh, what's his uh, Andy, Andy and Susan Young? They have an IMAX film called uh, Backyard Wilderness. Backyard Wilderness, mm -hmm. and it's amazing what you could find in your backyard from macro stuff, right? Oh yeah. To, you know, I think you have uh, someone posted a picture of a bear, I think, in their backyard in Florida wow. recently. Yeah, there has been a lot of bears up in uh, I think just north of us. We haven't yeah. had any here yet. No. Good. Yeah, <laughs> coyotes. We can get coyotes. coyotes yeah. We get coyotes. Yeah, I, I, got, I get hawks. I got. Uh, in fact, my bird feeder tends to attract the hawks. Oh really? Oh yeah. We had a, uh, a Cooper's hawk. Got a blue jay here about six months ago. So you find the feathers in the morning. <laughs> no, actually, it was out there, and uh, all of a sudden the bird took off, and I just see this feathers came down like snow. Yeah, the hawk hit him and got him. Yep. Well. Well, that's part. That's a circle but that's, of life. Yeah, there you go. Yeah, and I did not get a picture of him, but I, well, I got a picture of him as he, where he took the bird, but not of the actual capture. But I don't know if I wanted that anyway. <laughs> so, <laughs> any other words of wisdom? In fact, I was going to give one myself, I may, because you were Please, mentioning I'm, luck. I want to hear. We're, we're all we're all in this together, guys. And say okay. luck favors the prepared. Yes. Yes, mm -hmm. you have to be. Uh, you have to be prepared. Uh, uh, I have actually, <laughs> you know, I have a lot of books. Forty-two books, I think. Mm -hmm. uh, my next, my my next book might be Rick Salmon's Dumb Luck Shots. <laughs> <laughs> because really, you know how you have to be lucky. A, a lot of times, oh, you yeah. have to be. You know, especially in wildlife photography. You know, you could. I have a friend, Juan Pons. I don't know if you know. He's in Yellowstone right now, and he's out there, you know, photographing the bison with all the snow in their faces. But they're looking for foxes too, mm. and find, and it's minus three there. It was minus three there this morning. <laughs> so I don't know. Uh, it, you have to. You really have to be lucky. I wish him good luck out there. Yeah, the coldest I've ever been was in Yellowstone. We did a winter out there a few years ago, and I it dropped one morning to thirty below. And. I'll 30 you, below for a floor if 30 below for a floridian that is cold of course this is a guy oh. that uh in antarctic a couple of years ago i did the arctic plunge too so you did that i did it yes i did you know antarctica uh, well another expression that could apply to go into antarctica over the drake's passages it's not easy having fun <laughs> yeah that's true we were it's fortunate though it, it was the drake lake when we were there yeah, I saw some of your uh, pig penguin pictures. Yep. That's an amazing place. So oh, I'm scheduled is. to go in December. I hope that happens. Mm -hmm. But um, you know, if we can't go to all these great places, there are still so many. Uh, Nancy, do you know Nancy Lee Mudd? 
Nancy uh, she's M- a, Mudd. No, I'm afraid she's I don't. A member of the, she's a member of the group and not a professional photographer, but she definitely takes professional quality mm-hmm. pictures. She's doing amazing things in her kitchen with flowers. Mm. So she's not she's not drowning, right? She right. and she's been all over the world, and with we were in France together, and and we were playing in other places. But you know, she's she's making it happen. She is doing amazing work in her kitchen. Another member, Carol Vipperman, got a bunch of uh, little miniature figures, and with the lens baby, is doing some really cool things. Oh, yeah. <clears throat> so, it's uh you know there are a lot of app op- opportunities out there, and yeah, it's easy for me to say you know. Come here and say, "Hey, be positive. Everything's great." <laughs> I know it's not, but we just can't. We can't drown. Well, you get a little optimism. Do you have any workshops planned coming up? Hopefully, uh, now the vaccine's available, things might. Yeah, uh, we we got. Did you guys get yours yet? At least Fred has got. Those? I'm I, scheduled. I tried. It this was, week. Florida's been really slow to roll them out, so right. I'm hoping next time I'll be able to get mine. I know Florida is slow. Uh, I have some uh, friends there. We got ours uh, first one about two weeks ago. We're getting the next one on the 9th, February 9th. Uh, so I we're saw your be picture a, on the photo therapy. Yeah. <laughs> and you know what's crazy? I <clears throat> post a picture of me getting the vaccine, and people think I'm in, in a mask. They think I'm making a political statement. No. It's we crazy. have a, a friend here who's a photographer. I won't mention his name. But he is totally against masks, and um, I, I just don't understand. I don't know why it's political. I know. But anyway, uh, yeah, we have, uh, we're going to Greenland uh, later in this year. Oh. Uh, later this year. Actually, if you want to come and then uh, shoot me an email, uh, that's going to be kind of cool. That yeah, is one anyone... place we definitely want to go. Are you going by ship? Or are you? Uh... Yeah, we're going on the Poseidon ship. That's going to be kind of oh. cool. I was on the ship in the High Arctic uh, last that's year. That's who we went so... with. Did you know, uh, what is it, uh, Christina? Uh, what is it, uh, the ship photographer? Georgina. Uh, Georgina. Strange. Was she on no. your? No. Oh, she was a ship no, photographer. No, actually, on were... my ship, I'm the ship's photographer. Oh. Well, I mean, she was uh, the... Uh, Oh, the staff photographer. The staff photographer, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, no, John Bowen, I think, is his name. Uh, really talented photographer mm-hmm. with the drones and everything. But anyway, we have that coming up, Antarctica. What uh, is New that, uh, Rick? What? What, what is that, uh, the, the Greenland trip? When is it? Yes. I have to look. Uh, I think it's in September. We land in Reykjavik. And, yeah, it's actually September 6th through uh, 16th. Wow. And uh, it's going to be it's going to be a ton of fun, and and you know what? As I'm sure you know, and your listeners who follow the news knows, the ice is melting all over the world. Unfortunately, at an alarming rate. Mm-hmm. Not making a political statement. I'm just saying it's melting at an alarming rate. So I think people, especially in Greenland. Mm-hmm. So uh, I think uh, if you want to go to Greenland, you should go soon because yep. that's why people go. Yep, and I love Poseidon. So that's. <laughs> oh, that ship that's is great, great right? Yeah, it was the fantastic. Spear. Yeah. Well, fantastic. Uh, any uh, other workshops coming up? That. Uh... Uh, well, we have uh, Mount Rainier. Uh, I think that's in July. But uh, you know, we've scaled back, and we've had to can. I think I canceled all the all the workshops for uh, last year, and I'm not going anywhere right now. And the people who come up, we have a workshop scheduled. The first one is in uh, July. Mm-hmm. You have to have the vaccine you have to prove that you got the vaccine to come on sounds good yeah well, Rick, you guys we, are great i hope to play with you you know these instruments are they're not getting enough use and i just uh i'm just i just saw i'm, I'm buying a little bass travel guitar so it's uh do you know about these travel guitars no i uh you. well this is amazing this is a, it's about it's less than half the size of a regular bass they make guitars too but you know, on a, on a guitar, the tuning uh, pegs are at the end of the neck. Uh huh. This, the tuning pegs, they put in the body. Really? So that you don't have that long, you don't have that, you know, extra six or eight inches. So it's, it's this so compact. I mean, right. just do a search. Uh, bass travel it's a, guitar. It's a short neck, and it looks like suddenly there's just nothing at the end. Yeah, actually. And then, uh, and then uh, like you said, the machine heads are at the uh, body end. Yeah. Interesting. I know, it's cool. Wow. Cool. I've so seen I'll them. Bring that down. I've seen them, but uh, sounds and, great. I'd love to see it. And I've I've pretty much uh, 
went electronic a few years ago uh, on my drums. Uh, I don't play acoustics oh, anymore because first my neighbors didn't care for it, <laughs> right. and then um, I, the people that I play music with like it because we can control the volume very. You know, I just plug right into the the main yeah. sound system yeah, and we can control everything. No, no headsets. No headsets. We're oh. playing out through the speakers. Oh, but yeah, um, we're able to control the volume, so I'm not either overwhelming or underwhelming. In certain songs, we want more presence. Uh, other songs, less presence, and so we can. Yeah. You know, tune that on the on the soundboard, and that's nice. And they, it's funny because other drummers will say, "Oh, well, when do you, when do you think you're going to play real drums again?" And I kind of laugh at them and go, "Well, I don't think my the people I've been working with care about that. They're they're happy with what I'm doing right now, and it's working very well. And they're a little bit more portable. They're not as hard to because uh, uh, right. they're rack mount, so I can almost just about partially fold them down, put them in the back of my little SUV." and tool over there and here we are uh so wow, it's, that's cool it's well you're 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 a small kit there my travel base you know we could we could, <laughs> there you play, go. Uh, we could gig anywhere the, the, do you guys know the colony in in the delray beach the colony I've, hotel i've heard of it yeah it's a beautiful they have a veranda there maybe we could play them play the we veranda put out like a cop <laughs> make some money <laughs> there you go <laughs> oh no we just i, I want to go for the big money open the guitar case I'll just have the case okay, open okay. with a, and you could put a sign on it saying "Money here, please." Yep. Donations I, accepted. I Donations <laughs> accepted cheerfully. Sounds cool. We will play requests for money. Yes. <laughs> hey, that sounds like a plan. And now, now we're gonna have to learn. Now I'm gonna have to tell the guys we gotta learn Santana. Which one do you want? Black Magic Woman. Uh, actually, I've been playing a Moonflower, but um, okay. Uh, do you know Moonflower? It's a, uh, it's pretty cool. But yeah. I, you know, my, I would say an easy song to start with is. Uh, um, the thrill is gone. BB King. Right? Oh, oh yeah, that's no, a good one. See, I'm more of a blues player, so that's my. <laughs> oh, good, good, good. Also, then you like a little bit of like Georgia Satellites. They do a lot of uh, blues-based type songs. Yeah. In fact, I was fortunate. I, I went to school in North it, Carolina and got to hear BB uh, King play in person many, many, many times. Wow. So, uh, yeah. That must have been so, cool. so you can work on "Keep Your Hands to Yourself." That's a good a Georgia Satellite <laughs> song, and it's an well, easy. That's one. also good advice. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, so. <laughs> that's a good one. Another good. The tip. bass is no, it's it's a per fairly basic song, but people like it because it just has that nice want to tap your foot kind of beat to it. Yeah. It's a fun song, uh, just like you said. Uh, there's there's some good blues that are that can be real fun. Yeah. Uh, so we we jump around into a lot of areas, probably cool. pop rock, a little bit of blues type. Uh, stuff just whatever we look at and go hey this sounds pretty cool do you think we could do that i don't know let's try it you know if it doesn't do well we go all right that didn't work <laughs> and we try something else and uh sounds good to me we try to sing and harmonize and just you know crazy old men uh, sounds like fun to me yeah <laughs> <laughs> and I, t I keep trying to give jim a, a, a song list and say jim learn this learn this yep Hey, so I we'll have see. one more piece of advice. Sure. Okay. It's, it's on my it's on my T-shirt. I have to move my my mic away. Uh oh, so you can yeah. See okay. It. Here we go. Tell me if you could uh, see what it says. The stress is caused by not, not playing, playing enough bass, bass guitar. guitar. That's <laughs> it. There you go. <laughs> we just take our bass guitar. Not playing enough. That. <laughs> and on the percussion side, you can always say more cowbell. More cowbell. That's yes. right. <laughs> I, I have a fever, and the only way it can be cured is with more, more cowbell. cowbell. Yeah. More cowbell. <laughs> Rick, we really appreciate you. know, it's been way, way too long. We want to get you uh -huh. on again. It can't be so long sure. next time. <laughs> yeah, I'm sorry for the mix-up last time. Thank hey, you so much no for that's no problem. That's per hey, and, perfectly uh, understandable. Things happen, right? We have to learn to roll with stuff nowadays. Yep. Yeah. Maybe a little bit more than we want, but... Hey, we're yep. easy, so... <laughs> and we're Stay cheap. safe, guys. <laughs> yeah, we're cheap and easy. We're cheap and easy. Yes. <laughs> Sounds like a, a bad detective show, doesn't it? Yeah, cheap yeah, and easy. Right, cheap and easy. <laughs> well, stay safe, guys. You, yeah, too. you too. Thank you so much. We do appreciate it. Thank you. Mm -hmm.